Christ for the Pledge of Allegiance. This meeting notice was sent to the Asbury Park Press on May 15, 2018 and has been duly advertised in the Asbury Park Press issue of May 18, 2018. All municipal clerks of the township and boroughs within the regional high school district have been duly notified and the requirements of posting of notices have been met on May 15, 2018. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of March 18, 2019? Motion. Second. Discussion? None. Roll call, please. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Capiello? Corolla? Yes. Mrs. Fankhauser? Yes. Mrs. Lavin? Yes. Mr. Messinger? Yes. Mr. Moses? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Asitolo? Yes. Communications are on file in the office of the board <coughs> secretary. Reports. Superintendent, please. Thank you, Mr. Asitola. So welcome everyone to one of our three student recognition ceremonies that occur throughout the course of the year. Um, we're going we're gonna to call the six high schools up uh, one at a time to go through uh, some of the unbelievable accolades and, and accomplishments that our, our students have really earned over the past couple of months. And I think um, if you stick around for it, uh, w w which we would ask you to do to watch all six, you'll be duly impressed with uh, sort of the magnitude of what our students accomplish in this district on, on, on any given in any given season, in any given quarter. Um, it's it's really it's really phenomenal. And uh, I'd invite the board to come down off of the podium because the first component of this are some video uh, accolades. And so the Monmouth County Guidance Supervisors Association sponsors an award each year that's known as the, the Caring Awards, and we're gonna. We're going to recognize those six individuals. That's one individual from each high school, uh, first and foremost. So I'll call Mr. Dillon, my director of guidance and operations, uh, to the podium for that. Thank you, Mr. Sampson. First of all, congratulations to all the students and the parents here in the audience tonight. These accolades are obviously well deserved gives me great pleasure to recognize one senior from each of our six high schools who has earned the Monmouth County Guidance Director's Caring Award. Um, on Thursday, March 21st, at Brookdale Community College, one graduating senior from each Freehold Regional High School was awarded the Monmouth County Guidance Director's Caring Award for demonstrating exceptional caring and compassion to a cause, group, or program during their high school career. These committed and exceptional students were nominated by their counselors. What I'd like to do is show you the videos that these students have put together. I think you'll be extremely impressed. At the end of the videos, I'd like to call each of these six uh, awardees up to receive a medal and to be congratulated by their principal. Hi, my name is Kayla Hankins and I'm a senior at Cold Tech High School, class of 2019. I would first like to thank my guidance counselor, Ms. Van Boos, the rest of the guidance staff at Coltsnet, and all of my teachers that have recognized me for this award today. In Coltsnet High School, I tried to get involved in as many clubs and activities that I could. Being on varsity softball showed me a lot about teamwork. I am also a peer leader, which provides me with opportunities to get involved in my community. <coughs> After joining Cougars Connections and participating in the Best Day Foundation, I enjoyed working with special needs kids and volunteering. The most important part of my high school career was taking on the leadership role as president for Students Against Destructive Decisions, also known as SAD. In this club, we plan activities to raise awareness of the complex and obstacles students may face throughout their lives. One example of one of our activities is X Out Day, where we highlight the dangers of distracted driving. Another is a drunk goggle foul shot challenge, 
to emphasize that you only get one shot in life. We continue to give PSAs on texting and driving and the dangers of vaping. Also, last year we created a video shown to the student body about the necessity of seatbelt wearing. This year we made a video showing how to safely share the road with others. I'm so thankful to be receiving this award and I would like to thank Coastal High School for providing me with the opportunity to get involved.
Hi, my name is Andrew Bernstein. I'm a senior at Freehold Township High School. Before I begin, I would like to thank my guidance counselor, Ms. Anderson, for nominating me for the 2019 Monmouth County Caring Award. I would also like to thank the staff of Freehold Township High School for their constant positivity and support. With that said, my philosophy when it comes to volunteering is best answered by life's most persistent and urgent question, according to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And that question is, what are you doing for others? Personally, I attempt to always apply this question to my daily actions, especially my volunteer activities. When I was a sophomore in high school, I began volunteering with the local SPCA, which eventually became an organization known as All for Love. The ability to help animals has always been important to me. I strive to provide much deserved love to these defenseless animals, who often come from neglect and abandonment. We rely on a system of dedicated volunteers who love these animals and provide countless hours of socialization and care. Whether it be an animal or person, the importance of love and kindness can never be understated. Next, one of my most meaningful volunteer activities is my involvement with the Francis Foundation for Kids Fighting Cancer. Cancer has taken its toll on my family as it has millions of others. I lost my grandfather to prostate cancer and my grandmother is currently winning her fight with ovarian cancer. Through the Francis Foundation, I participate in the annual Thanksgiving dinner at Jersey Shore Medical Hospital, in which I help to prepare and serve dinner to patients, families, and staff. One of my favorite memories is putting on a ceremonial turkey costume and visiting young patients. The smiles of these young children is one of the most gratifying and rewarding experiences. In all, I believe in the philosophy of creating value out of my life by lifting up others and doing what I can to positively impact those around me and my community. I wish to thank you for your time and attention. I hope my words and story have inspired you and proved the necessity for kindness and volunteerism.
I'm Sean Shea, signing off. Once again, thank you to these students who have made significant contributions to their communities, and I know they'll be making contributions as they go off and graduate in only a few short months. I'd like to recognize each of them. Um, when I call your name, if you could come up, shake hands with Mr. Samson, and then please remain up in the front so we can get one picture with all of our award recipients. From Colts Neck High School, Kayla Hankin. From Freehold High School, Leland Lockwood. From Freehold Township High School, Andrew Bernstein. From Howell High School, Kayla Fittipaldi. From Manalapan High School, Ananya Hajra. And finally, from Marlboro High School, Sean Chang. Sean couldn't be here tonight because he's teaching English to English language learners, so again, serving the community. Uh, I'd like to give one last round of applause to our Monmouth County Guidance Directors Caring Award recipients. Thank you. Next, I'd like to call up Mr. Broberman, principal at Howell High School. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As Mr. Dillon said, I'm Mr. Broberman, the prep principal at Howell High School. Uh, I'd first like to thank the Board of Education and Mr. Sampson, the central office, for allowing us to uh, have an evening like this and acknowledge all these wonderful students. So to kick things off, this year we have a National Merit semi-finalist at Howell High School. So a National Merit commended recipient is based on PSAT selection index scores out of 1.6 million entrants into the PSAT National Merit Scholarship Program. These students are in a pool of approximately 34,000 students to be commended in the National Merit Scholarship Program. That represents less than 2% of all PSAT test takers. Howell High School's John Morgan earned the distinction of a semi-finalist for the National Merit Scholarship Program. Of those 34,000 students commended in the program, half of them move on in the competition. They are the highest scoring entrants in the state and are eligible to apply to become a National Merit Finalist. With Jonathan Morgan, please come up. Next up is the Gold Medal Congressional Award. The Gold Medal Congressional Award winner this year is Ciara DeMilo. I'm gonna read a little bit about her before I have her come up. So participants earn bronze, silver, and gold Congressional Award certificates and bronze, silver, and gold Congressional Award medals. Each level involves setting goals in four program areas. Volunteer, public service, personal development, physical fitness, and exploration. Earning the Congressional Award is a fun and interesting way to get more involved in something you already enjoy and something maybe that you would do for the first time. You move at your own pace and you either do it by yourself or with a friend. This is not an award for past accomplishments. Instead, it's an honor for achieving your, achieving your own challenging goals after registering for the program. Sierra has been working for over three years now to achieve this award. She's dedicated um, to skip all of the medals and all of the certificates to go straight for the gold. This consists of Sierra getting 400 plus volunteer hours, 200 plus physical fitness hours, 200 plus personal development hours, and a five day, four, four night exploration. 
Lastly, Ciara will be attending a ceremony in Washington, D.C. Ciara, please come up and get your At this time, I'd like for the students from Howell High School are here for All Shore Band and All State Band. If you please come up and stand in front, and I'll talk about you as you come up. Okay, so. All Shore Symphonic Band members have completed an audition process that competed against all secondary schools in Monmouth and Ocean County. Preparation for this begins late in the summer and continues throughout the school year while also completing their normal school work and activities. Accomplishing this goal affords students the opportunity to experience performing under local, collegiate, and national level conductors in preparation for the annual concert in, at Neptune Performing Arts Center. This year's All Shore Band members are Mary Kate Donaway, she plays the piccolo, Melissa Paramonti, flute, Christopher Caprio, clarinet, Annalise Toronto, clarinet, Danny Fisher, bass clarinet, first chair, Nicholas Salarno, trumpet, first chair. Bruce Perez, French horn. David Montegri, trombone. Aiden Van Berger, trombone. Jason Braun, trombone. David Motto, tuba. Casey Russo, clarinet. And Philip Golmi, percussion. Next, we have two members that are all state band members, and they're up here as well. Um, I'll talk about them in a second. Their names are Nick Salarno and David. Monte, Montegru, keep butchering that name. Uh, bass, bass trombone and trumpet. So all state band, while having similar preparation requirements to all shore, is much more competitive. These students must first audition and compete with students from throughout central New Jersey. If they make it to the region ensemble, they are afforded the opportunity to audition for all state band. The all state band is conducted by a nationally recognized music educators around the state. The All-State Concert is performed at New Jersey Performing Arts Center in Newark. Congratulations to our All-State and All-Shore band. Okay, you guys can have a seat, thank you. I'd like to call to the microphone the Supervisor of Extracurricular Activities, Mr. Pete Meehan. up here um, at this event. You do this three times a year and it just never ceases to amaze me on how spectacular and how wonderful our kids really are. Um, I'm going to go over some stuff with sports. Um, first I'd like to call up our boys bowling team. Our bowling team this year um, was short conference champions. Um, we also had to celebrate Brian Garifano who bowled the 300 game. Um, we bowled two 300s this year. Gus Horvath bowled the 300. And then about three weeks later, um, Brian Garfano pulled a, uh, a 300. I'd like to call Coach Wetzel up. Um, I don't know how many of the boys are here. I only saw one of them that showed up. We're going to bring them all up here, whoever's going to show. Coach Wetzel, um, Brian Garfano, who pulled the 300. Gus Warbath, who pulled the 300. Mike Hortenhouse, Jake Hager, Henry Heck, and Jack McCarthy. That's our short conference champions, boys bowling.
Next, I'm going to call up uh, two young ladies for track and field. Um, these two young ladies were the shot put relay champs, state champs for group four. Um, indoor, uh, Hannah Rosenmertz and Brianna Wilson. Brianna Wilson was also the individual state champ shot uh, for group four in the entire state of New Jersey. Um, Hannah's a pretty special gal here. Last year she was state champ in the shot. And I'm going to call her up in a little bit with our cheer team. Um, Hannah Rosenmartz right here is a two-time state, two-time state shot putter, state champion. She's a four-time, four-time state champ for cheer and a three-time national champ for cheer, which is incredible. I mean, just to think about it. She was able to compete each year, be a state champ, be a national champ, and also be a state champion in shot, but at the same time, it's absolutely incredible. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, I'm going to call our cheer team. Our girls' cheer team were state champs. They also went down to Wide World of Sports, ESPN Zone, and Disney, and won a national title there as well. Um, I'm going to call you girls up. Please line up in front and we'll give you your medals. Um, Hannah about Marco, Amanda Bailey, Juliana Barron, Carly Roberman, Gianna Cataldo, Jordan Fadaruso, Morgan Gonzalez, Kayla Kolowski, Rebecca Mazin, Kylie McGowan, Jessica McGee, Alexa Musico, Megan Myla, Ariella Palmieri, Brianna Palmieri, Angelina Pesci, Allison Pinkert, Grace Quigley, Isabella Ramos, Hannah Rosenmerz, Sophia Sarantos, Julia Schneider, Angelina Saletti, Gianna Tomeno, Olivia Torsiello, and Kayla Walsh. I give you our 2019 New Jersey State Champs and National Champs. Congratulations, ladies. Next, I'd like to call to the dais our wrestling team. Our wrestling team fell a little short this year at States. Um, we lost by a point. Uh, they were short conference champions, though. They did a tremendous job. Uh, great group of athletes. Still looking forward to, to them doing some great things in the future. Um, this year, we won our 14th straight A North title. Uh, quite an accomplishment. They've been dominating uh, for years and years and years. I'm going to call them up by weight class and say, and say a little bit about each one. At 106, junior Ethan Lipson. This year he was 31-9, and nine, career 66 wins, 17 losses. He was second in District 25, fourth in Region 7, and finished in the top 16 in the state of New Jersey. Congratulations, Ethan. 113 pound sophomore Kyle Nace, 19 and 11, 24 and 13 on his career. At 120 pounds, 10th grader James McGee, who's 17 and 8, career 17 and 8. Congratulations. <laughs> At 126 pounds, sophomore Nico Malone, he was 30 and 10. He's a career record of 64 and 17. He took first place in the short conference tournament, second in District 25, fourth in Region 7, and he was a New Jersey State qualifier. Congratulations. 
at 132 pounds, freshman Nick Aque, 7-9, 7-9 nine, nine on his career. At 138 pounds, senior Darby Dietrich. This year he was 38 and 4. He has a career record of 156 wins, 21 losses. He was first place in the short conference tournament, first place in District 25, first place Region 7, finished top 12 in the state of New Jersey. Congratulations. <laughs> One hundred forty-five pounds, senior Pierce Gomez. This year he was twelve and fifteen with a career record of twenty-three and nineteen. Congratulations, Pierce. At one hundred fifty-two pounds, sophomore Paul Jacob. This year he's thirty-three and eight. He has a career record of sixty-seven and fifteen. He was first place short conference tournament, first place district twenty-five, second place region seven, finishing the top twenty-four in the state of New Jersey. At 160 pounds, senior Xavier Kelly. This year he had a record of 23 and 4, his career 85 and 21. He finished second place in the short conference tournament and third place in District 25. Congratulations, to Xavier. <laughs> At 170 pounds, junior Shane Reitzma. Had a record this year of 42 and 2. He has a career record of 123 wins, 10 losses. He was first place short conference tournament, first place district 25, first place region 7, and finished second place in the state of New Jersey at 170 pounds. At 182 pounds, senior Christian Murphy. This season he was 37 and 9. He has a career record of 128 wins, 33 losses. He was second place in the short conference tournament. First place, District 25, second place, Region 7, and finished seventh in the state of New Jersey at 182 pounds. Congratulations, Christian. At 195 pounds, senior Jake Nace. This season was 23 and 12, career record of 33 and 21. Third place, District 25, and Region 7 qualifier. Congratulations, Jake. At 220 pounds, senior Joe Sardina. This season he was 29 and 10. He has a career record of 57 and 31. He was first place District 25, first place Region 7, and finished in the top 16 in the state of New Jersey at 220 pounds. Congratulations, Joe. <laughs> and then heavyweight junior Justin Wright. This season he was 21 and 8. He has a career record of 26 and 8. He was fourth place short conference tournament, second place district 25, and a region seven quarter finalist. Congratulations, Justin Wright. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you short conference champions, 2019 wrestling team. Now I'll how high school, Mr. Spence. Hey, we'll call Dr. Angelosi up from Manalpin High School. Sampson for honoring our schools and our students. Additionally, I would like to congratulate all other district medal recipients. Now we'll get started with the awards from Manalapan High School. I would first like to recognize the following two students for reaching the rank of Eagle Scouts in the Boy Scouts of America, Peter Stormer and Siddharth Coley. that he would not be here with us this evening. Uh, these two young men have mastered the required scouting skills, completed an array of merit badges, 
completed their Eagle Scout project and have passed their Eagle Scout board of review. Pete, don't go anywhere. Get right here. We'll face the crowd. Good. Uh, Peter's Eagle Scout project involved the collection, distribution, and increasing awareness for the Ashley Lauren Foundation. The Ashley Lauren Foundation is a New Jersey based nonprofit organization that raises money and awareness for childhood cancer. The organization provides the children as well as their family with financial support and emotional support through their battle with childhood cancer. The first part of the project included the construction of collection bins to gather gifts, which led to the collection of pajamas, blankets, and new toys for the children. Finally, Peter helped increase awareness for the organization for, by speaking at various networking events, town meetings, and on a local online radio show. The project culminated in a holiday party for the children and their families that the Ashley Lauren Foundation works with. At the parties, the gifts that Peter collected were distributed to each child, and he expressed that this was his favorite part of the project. Uh, for Siddharth's project, he renovated 20 sections of old fencing at Mammoth Battlefield State Park, which was about 100 feet of fence in total. And for those social studies teachers in here, the fence indicated the continental front line during the Battle of Mammoth. So, congratulations, Peter. Nice job. Now on to the National Merit Scholarship Program finalists from Annalapin High School. Mr. Broberman had mentioned the, the part of the competition. Um, so to become a finalist, uh, well, let me ask the students to come down first. I'd like Brian Charon to come down, Talab Bin Nathwala, and William Kang. Bob, I think I've said your name at least eight times at District Medal so far, so I'll, I'll get it right by graduation. <laughs> Out of the 1.6 million entrants in the PSAT National Merit Scholarship Program, uh, the three students are in a pool of approximately 15,000 students to be considered finalists in the National Merit Scholarship Program. That represents the top 1% of all PSAT test takers. Furthermore, William Kang, who could not be with us, is the recipient of a National Merit Scholarship. In the fall, Brian, who is on your left up here, he told me today he's most likely headed to the University of Maryland. And Talav, on your right, is headed to Oxford University. Congratulations, gentlemen. You're good. Thank you. We're good. Thank you. The lob loves when I embarrass him. I would like to now recognize uh, William Kang again, who couldn't be, and Tarun Pillabulathil, if you're here. No? Okay, those two students were top scorers in the Shore Math League this year. Now I'd like to call up Naga Ganti, Jabin Lang, and Ben Malakov. Please come down to the front. Two out of three in bed. <laughs> These students both scored a perfect 800 in mathematics on their SATs. Unlike some other national exams that are curves in the math section of the SAT, you can pretty much assume that you must get every question correct to achieve a perfect 800. It is estimated that less than 1% of all test takers score a perfect 800 on the math portion of the SATs. Well done. Thank you guys. I'd now like to call down Stephen Aaron, Ryan Sikora, <laughs> Kayla Lemma, Jessica Deans, and Frank Didato. <laughs> These students represent Manalapan High School's Consumer Bowl team. 
At the Consumer Bowl, student teams from around the county answer consumer-related question in a multiple choice and open-ended format to test their knowledge of consumer issues such as internet fraud and buying and leasing automobiles. I am happy to say that our team won the county level competition and, and this I believe is the first time in school history that we've won the Consumer Bowl. So I, I was a little bit worried like is, is this a fluke? And then they got to the regionals and they got all the way to the finals where they just narrowly missed out on being region champs. So congratulations to our Consumer Bowl. And finally, for me anyway, I would now like Elizabeth Fuchsin to come down to the front. Elizabeth had another gold medal performance, uh, this time at the Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America State Leadership Conference. Every year, more than 700 members of FCCLA gather for this conference where they demonstrate skills and display projects while enjoying inspirational messages in various workshops. <coughs> Furthermore, there are state and national comp competitive events offered to students at uh, the State Leadership Conference. Elizabeth may have joined this club in an effort to increase her leadership abilities, um, but she has certainly excelled in some other areas as well. She earned a gold medal in the luncheon menu competitive event. <laughs> She planned a nutritionally well-balanced luncheon menu, complete with one plated presentation. Congratulations, Elizabeth. I will now turn the program over to the supervisor of extracurricular activities for Manalapan High School, Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Dr. Angelosi. First, I would like to thank Mr. Sampson, Central Administration and the Board of Ed for hosting this night, as well as the Marlboro Administration for putting together such a great event. It's always a true honor to come and see all the recipients and all the amazing things that they have accomplished over the year. Um, Manalpin High School had a phenomenal year of wrestling. Um, our wrestling team went to the Century Jersey Group 5 State Championship and came in second place but we have some truly phenomenal athletes that we would like to honor tonight. First up, Hunter Constantoulis. Hunter is a junior. His weight class is 126. His record was 31 and 10. He was the District 20 champion. He was fourth in the region, and he finished top 24 in the state. Congratulations. Next up is a senior. 132 pounds, Mr. Alex Barron. <laughs> Alex couldn't make it tonight, but he finished with a record of 43 and three. He was the team captain. He was first in the Nottingham Invitational, first in the Walter Woods Tournament, first in the Shore Conference Tournament. He set a school record for wins. He had a 123 career, uh, excuse me, career wins. He was the District 20 champion. He was second in the region, and he finished top 16 in the state. 152 is senior Paul Santanamarco. Paul finished with a record of 38 and 10. He was also first in the Nottingham Invitational. He was a District 20 champion. He was fourth in the region and he finished top 12 in the state. Congratulations, Paul. At 160, we have a junior, Matt Benedetti. Finished 41 and 7. He finished second in the Nottingham Invitational, second in the Shore Conference Tournament. He was a District 20 champion. He finished second in the region, and he also finished sixth in the state of New Jersey. <laughs> in addition to these gentlemen, we had some females who put together some phenomenal performances throughout the course of this year. So we would like to honor them as well. One who I don't think could be here tonight is Jess here tonight. Okay, Jess Johnson um, finished number one in the state of New Jersey. Um, she did a phenomenal job. She's only a sophomore. At 136, she finished with a record of 19 and one. She was first in the Brick Zoo, third in the region, and the first female state champion in school history. Yeah. 
Julia Minoli, sophomore. Come on down, Jules. Jules went 11 and five. She was the short conference tournament showcase champ. She finished third in the region and she also finished sixth in the state. Congratulations. And last but certainly not least, our senior, Angelina Vitola. Angelina finished 16 and four. She was also a Brick Zoo champ, the short conference tournament showcase champ. She finished second in the region, and she also finished sixth in the state. Congratulations. That concludes the athletic portion from an Alvin High School. Mr. Sampson. Thank you. We'll call up representatives from Freel Township. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sampson. Thank you. I'd like to echo what my predecessors have said in thanking Central Administration, the Board of Education, uh, for putting this evening on uh, and congratulating all of the students and their families that are being recognized this evening. Uh, I'm Adam Busati. I'm the supervisor of extracurricular activities at Freehold Township High School. Uh, Mrs. Higley uh, echoes my sentiments about congratulations to all the families and students uh, as she could not be here this evening. First of all, we are going to call the students from Freehold Township High School that are National Merit Commended Scholars. So please make your way to the front. Freehold Township High School had four students that were National Merit Commended Scholars. Those students are Kelly Buca, Anna Kaganova, Evan Nastarovich, and Andrew Quinlan. Andrew and Kelly are making their way to the front to receive their medals. Congratulations to both of you. Anna's on her way up. Evan, unfortunately, could not be here this evening. But congratulations to all four. Thank you. As Dr. Angelosi previously mentioned, the Family Career and Community Leaders of America, or FCCLA for short, held their state competition in March. Freehold Township High School had five young ladies that earned the most prestigious award given out by the FCCLA, the Gold Award. I'd like to invite those girls to the front to receive their district medal at this time. Those five young ladies are Chloe Conroy, Jessica Israelov, Brielle Klavak, Kayla Davis, and Sarah Douglas. Congratulations, ladies. All right. Thank you, ladies. Congratulations. Now, Free Old Township High School had 20, 20 members of our band earn all sorts of phonic band honors. Will all of those students in attendance this evening please make their way to the front at this time? Those 20 students are Jessica Hackinson, flute and principal piccolo, Andy Bala, flute, Andrew Solaro, principal oboe and bassoon, Ryan Gibbons, Clarinet, Daniel Ealing, Clarinet, John Hayward, Clarinet, Taylor Stanley, Clarinet, Kaylee Hoffman, Bass Clarinet, Sean Tu, Alto Saxophone, Maggie Earhart, Principal Baritone Saxophone, Kevin Arizapana, Trumpet, Hadley Schachter, French Horn, Simon Clark, French Horn, Michael Boney, Trombone, Julia Feldman, trombone, Douglas Luke, principal bass trombone and trombone, Anna DePass, tuba, James Harper, battery percussion, Emily Guinea, principal timpani, and Paige Jiraki, French horn. Round of applause for those 20 students. Stay up 
Kevin Ariza Pana, step forward for a moment. Michael Boney and James Harper, if they're in attendance, please step forward as well. I'm asking these gentlemen to step forward because not only were these gentlemen on the All Shore Symphonic Band, they also earned All Shore honors for the Jazz Band. So congratulations to them. <laughs> and Lowry, you also take a step forward. Andrew is the closest to me here on my left. In addition to earning All Shore Symphonic Band honors, Andrew earned All State honors with the bassoon. For all of their efforts, these students are going to be able to partake in various concerts highlighting the All Shore and All State bands. And I would like to note that Friel Township High School had the most total representation of any school in the Shore Conference on the All Shore band. So congratulations again to all of these students. Thank you all. Thank you all. Congratulations. Is Adam Ma in attendance? All right, I'll quickly say, Adam Ma entered herself in the New Jersey Distinguished Young Woman competition and earned that honor as New Jersey's Distinguished Young Woman of 2019. That earned her a scholarship and she will have the opportunity to compete for the national title of Distinguished Young Woman in June. So congratulations to Anna, even though she cannot be Moving on to athletics, we have one wrestler that we're going to recognize this evening, Christian Mangini. Please make your way to the front. <laughs> Christian finished the season at 23 and 12. He started the year third place in the Old Bridge Icebreaker. He finished the season in fitting fashion as a senior, as the District 21 champion in the 138 pound weight class, coming from the five seed which is rather unprecedented at the high school level to come from that, that seed and have to wrestle. He had to defeat the top seed at some point before the finals to even get there. He led the team in pitfalls, qualified for the region tournament. Congratulations, Christian. All right, our track and field team had a number of accomplishments during their indoor season. Uh, I don't know if the ladies are here. Isabel Frank and Sophia Yun, if you ladies are here, please make your way to the front. Uh, the girls teamed up as our high jump relay. They won the county relay championship and the group four state championship. Sophia also won the individual county championship in the high jump, and Isabel was named first team all sure. So although they're not here, congratulations to those young ladies. I saw, I see all four of them. Will our four by 400 meter relay team make their way to the front? Our men's four by 400 meter relay team of Justin Leonard, Parker Scherer, Tyler Kelly, and Rob Lee. These gentlemen together won the Central Jersey Group Four Championship race in the four by 400 meter relay. Congratulations, gentlemen. Tyler in particular, I'd like to point out, will be continuing his cross country and track and field career at Rutgers University in the fall. Now hold on, I'll, I'll, I'll let them hang out up here as one of their teammates comes on up. Nick Lumberg, make your way to the front, please. And as Nick's making his way, I would also like to add, in addition to being part of the 4x400 and going to Rutgers, Tyler was our short conference champion in the 800 meter run. <laughs> Nick Lundberg was the 3200 meter race champion at both the short conference championships and the Central Jersey Group 4 race, so a two-time 3200 meter race champion in the winter. Nick will be continuing his academic and athletic careers at Fordham in the fall of 2019. Congratulations to the five gentlemen. Thank you for your Thank you. We're looking forward to what we're going to do in the spring season now. All right. We have a couple of team accomplishments to point out. Will the members of our Central Jersey Group 4 basketball team come to the front. As they make their way, I'll just 
read off the entire roster, the entire team, not the entire team could be here this evening. Um, but led by Coach Brian Golub and his assistants, Todd Smith, Matt Hardison, Stephen Talbot, and Dylan Burns, our Central Jersey Group 4 champion basketball team is Zach Barilka, Christian Corsione, Greg Billups, Seth Meisner, Greg Sola, Max Gluck, Kevin Kalinskis, Matt Santangelo, Ben Kiribasi, Jeremy Thorne, Joel Lardaro, Jace Shapiro, and Zach Oreco. Little bit of action. The boys tied this, uh, for the second best number of wins in school history with a final record of 24 and 5. They were the A North Division champions, advanced to the Final Four of the Short Conference Tournament, uh, losing to the number one seed and eventual champion Ranny, who was the number one team in the state of New Jersey with two uh, soon to be professional basketball players on their team. Um, however, their crowning achievement was winning the first state sectional title in our school's history with a one-point victory at top seed Trenton Central, and they advanced all the way to the Group 4 championship game before bowing out to Northeast Side at Rutgers University in the championship game on a Sunday afternoon back in March. Congratulations, boys. It was a hell of a ride. I know they say usually it's ladies first, but I'm saving ladies for last. Girls bowling, come on down. <laughs> this is becoming a habit by these girls. So as they make their way down, our, our varsity bowlers, they're all here, and they're mar matching state championship jackets. Very nice, ladies. We have Caitlin Tamai, Kristen Pagliaro, Gianna Sfrisi, Sarah Orensky, Jaden Schaefer, and Tamira White. The girls won their third consecutive division championship, second consecutive county championship, and they capped off their season with the first ever group championship in girls bowling where they won the group three championship. They ended up the number two team in the state. So congratulations girls and to their coaches, Coach Wickford and Coach Wickford. I'm going to ask Sarah Lorenzi to step forward. Sarah was literally and figuratively the anchor of our lineup. She earned first team all shore and first team all state honors for her accomplishments. Congratulations, Sarah. Congratulations, guys. We do this again at the same time next year, okay? All right, we got one more. Thank you, girls. You can go back to your seats. All right, last but certainly not least, Zach Simon, make your way up to the front. So, I want to take a moment to recognize Zach Simon, um, who's going to be continuing his education in one of the more noble ways possible. Zach does a lot for Freehold Township High School. Zachary Simon is our class president. He runs three seasons of cross country and track. He's my liaison to the NJSIAA uh, with their newly formed student advisor panel. And through all of that, the reason we are recognizing Zach this evening is because he was recently appointed to become a West Point cadet and he will continue his education and begin his preparation. And he will continue his education and begin, and begin his preparation to serve our nation. Congratulations, Zach. I know how hard you work on this. And how much you that concludes the program for Freehold Township High School. Thank you again. Congratulations, everyone. Mr. Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Brissett. So we'll go with the Freehold Borough next. Freehold High School. Uh, as uh, I'd like to ask the two national merit finalists to come forward, please. As they're, as they're making their way down, Dr. 
Dr. Angelo Lee mentions that uh, to be a National Merit finalist, you are in the top 1% of any student who takes the PSAT in that given year in the country. And uh, we have Mitchell Malkoff and Karunas uh, Gunda. Uh, Mitchell will be also important to add that both of them are also had earned an 800 on their SAT math scores. Uh, Mitchell will be attending NJIT, and Sharud Ness is going to the Rutgers Combined Medical Program in the fall. So congratulations. Next, I, I'm going to acknowledge uh, other students we had 20 students at Freehold High School, 15 seniors and five juniors earn a perfect 800 on their uh, SAT. That is, I, I gotta tell you, this is an impressive statistic here. I double checked it twice, I was like, was there an error here or someplace? But there isn't. So as I call your name, and proudly call your name, would you step forward down to the podium, please? Sean Beckerell. Nick Brophy, Stephen Lee, Dylan Johnson, Jason Liang, Connor Lum, Alexander Makinick, Casey Ostich, Linnell Ogenblick, Mehek Patel, Maya Patel, Erica Tan, Brian Cleary, David Kim, And Zun Vu. If you could step forward, please. and advisor, Ms. Halpin, please, to come to the front. Woo! Woo! Yeah! At the High School, DECA is a very big organization. It started about six years ago with Ms. Halpin as the advisor. Our chapter currently has 240 students. Uh, and the students who are here tonight have all reached some pretty significant achievements within DECA. When I say your name, could you just take a little step forward so we know who we're talking about? Casey McCutcheon competed in the sports and energy and marketing event in DECA for the last two years. This year, he received first place at the regional competition. Then at the state competition, he competed again in both sports market marketing. He qualified to compete also at the national competition in both events. So. He's um, going strong there. The next, Allison, Allison Boschetti. She's a three-year member of DECA and has qualified to compete at the state conference all three years. This year, Allie received the New Jersey DECA State Scholarship of $1,500. She will be attending Syracuse University in the fall, majoring in public relations. Matt has been a DECA member since he was a sophomore and has competed at all three state conferences. This year he won in both of his events at States, Hotel Lodging, and Entrepreneurship Promotion Program. Matt also won a DECA Central Region Scholarship of $1,000. He will be attending Virginia Tech and majoring in engineering. <laughs> Isaac Fall. Isaac has been in DECA for two years and he competes in the human resources category. As a junior, he joined our leadership team, and next year, he will be our chapter president. <laughs> Mitchell Gagliardo. <laughs> Michael, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Michael Gagliardo. Michael will be continuing the Freehold High School tradition of having a student on the New Jersey DECA State Officer Board. He will serve as the New Jersey DECA State Recording Secretary. Thank you. Thank you. 
She was awarded the 2019 Outstanding Service Award this year at the DECA State Conference. Every year, this is given to one advisor, only one, who has served between six to ten years. Ms. Halpin has been the DECA advisor for six years, and as I said, currently our school has a chapter of 240 students. <laughs> about uh, all that it takes to be an all shore jazz band, chorus, orchestra, symphonic band, whatever it might be. I have, uh, from Freehold High School, we have five students. If you could come forward, please. As a coming forward, I would like to add that all of these students, regardless of what they're trying out for, you have to prepare a solo piece. You have to be able to do scales and sight readings as part of the components of the audition. You have to commit to the rehearsal time, some of which they tell me is all over the state, as well as various performance states. Then you have to continue to practice the music for the culminating performance that will be given at different schools in the area. So All Shore Jazz Band, we have Matthew Perkins, Ruan Gamelot, Harry Alec. <laughs> and in all state chorus, David Kim. So, and now to Mr. Longo, our supervisor of extracurricular activities. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Once again, I'd like to thank the Board of Education, Mr. Sampson, and Central Administration for providing us this opportunity to celebrate all the amazing students and student athletes that our district has to offer. Freehold High School had a relatively quiet winter season. I won't be calling down a bunch of wrestlers or track teams and things of that nature, but we do have a few individuals we would like to recognize. I'd like to first call down Junior Joe Lucurcio. Come on. Joe was a distance runner this past season for our winter track team. Some of his accomplishments at the Monmouth County Championships, he finished in the top 10 in the 800, and he took sixth place in the 1600. At the Shore Conference Championships, Joe placed fourth in the 3200, and in the Central Jersey Group 3 State Sectionals, he took second in the 1600 and fourth in the 3200. He was also uh, voted a member of our all-district team. One of the main reasons we brought Joe up tonight is Joe broke two of our modern-day school records for Freehold High School in the 1600 and 3200 meter races. Congratulations. <laughs> Next up, I'll call down Mitchell Malikoff. <laughs> we were trying to keep him down here, but it took off on us. So Mitchell had a dominant season in the pool this year for Freelboro High School um, and throughout his entire high school career. Mitchell set five school swimming records this past season in the 200 freestyle, 200 individual medley, the 100 fly, the 500 freestyle, and the 100 breaststroke. During the Monmouth County Championships, Mitchell placed second in both the 100 freestyle and the 100 backstroke. Mitchell also qualified for the short conference where he finished third in the 100 freestyle and second in the 100 backstroke. Mitchell qualified to swim in states, but unfortunately he was unable to attend the meet. As Mrs. Jewell stated earlier, next year Mitch will be going to NJIT to either study biology or biomedical engineering, and he will also be swimming for NJIT. Congratulations. Last but certainly not least, this is our, it seems to be our yearly Nico Messina segment of the program. Come on down, Nico. So in case you don't know, Nico is a wrestler for Freelboro High School. He is a junior and he continues to add to his wrestling legacy at Freelboro. This year, Nico had another outstanding season. He was a winner of the Mustang Classic Championship. He was first team All-A North. 
He was also voted to the All Monmouth County team and second team All Shore. This past year, Nico scored a three-peat as a district champion and a repeat as a Region 6 winner, and he is also a three-time finalist. Um, Nico had, is a second straight region champion, and this also happened to mark Nico's 100th career win. Nico's record now as a junior sits at 102 and 16. This year in the Atlantic City State Tournament, Nico advanced to the round of 12. He was one round away from placing, and next year the goal is to obviously be a champion and get himself on the podium. Congrats, Nico. segment of the program. Congratulations to all the medal recipients and happy holiday season everyone. Thank you, Mr. Longo. So we go to Colts Night High School. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, good evening ladies and gentlemen. We have the administrative team at Colts Night High School. I'd like to thank Mr. Sampson, the Central Watch Administration, and the Board of Education for allowing us to recognize our students tonight. Additionally, I would like to congratulate all of our district medal winners from our sister schools. There is really truly a tremendous amount of talent in the regional, and I think it was on display tonight. So we have a few things to go through for Coltspec High School tonight. And first, I would like to bring up our DECA winners. So if I can bring up our DECA students, and I'll talk to you a little bit about them as they come up. Our DECA program continues to improve every year and be one of the most successful programs in the state. Colstack High School's DECA chapter participated at the New Jersey DECA High School State Career Development Conference in Atlantic City. 35 of our students were invited to participate at the state event, and through their participation, 11 students earned spots to represent CNHS at the DECA High School Division International Career Development Conference in Orlando this spring. Of these 11, five won individual state championships, or state, individual state competitions this year. I'd like to recognize them first, Trevor Ballingall and Parker Ballingall won first place for their franchise business development plan. <laughs> These two have been a driving force in DECA for the last four years where they're graduating, so we're gonna sad to see them go, but they're, they've done a great job for us. Uh, Trevor also won second place in his professional selling event, so he placed in two places. <laughs> Eden Dabrowski won first place for her innovation plan. Kristen Velaverde, first place for professional selling and finance. Kristen Hartman, first place quick serve management plan. So, great job to our DECA students. Thank you guys. Great job. And as uh, Dr. Angelosi and Mrs. Jewell uh, spoke about earlier, Colsec High School is proud to announce that we had two, also two national merit scholar finalists. So I'd like to bring up uh, Jacob Kashian and Zoya Pander. I don't think Jacob can make it tonight, but we are proud to have Zoya here tonight. Great job, Zoya. Congratulations. Colson High School is also proud to announce that we had several students obtain perfect scores on the SAT as well. Ty Blitzstein, an 800 on the reading SAT. <laughs> Ty, when you make your way down here, don't go too far, okay? And we also had Dylan Jacobs, an 800 on the math SAT. Nicholas of Elvigi couldn't be here with us tonight. And uh, Brian Perlstein, did you make it tonight? No. Brian was on the fence, okay. Brian Perlstein couldn't make it either, but we'll, we'll get them in June. So thank you, gentlemen. Excellent job. Ty, just gonna go by the side over there. <laughs> I'd like to bring out the Colts Neck Mock Trial Team. So if you guys could come down. We'll tell you a little bit about this impressive group. On Thursday, Colstack High School defeated Mainland Regional High School to win the 37th annual Vincent J. Abrusese 
High School Mock Trial Championship at the New Jersey State Bar Foundation. Colstack High School beat out 216 other teams in the New Jersey competition. And the team will represent the state in the National Mock Trial Championships in Athens, Georgia next month. I gotta tell you, I was there Thursday, it was like law and order. These guys were great. It was amazing. But just so you get a little bit of a, an idea of what they did, the finals were presided over by New Jersey Supreme Court Chief Justice Stuart Rapner and Superior Court Judge Marilyn Clark. These students, and you think about how many attorneys there are in the state of New Jersey, these students got to try a case in front of the New Jersey Supreme Court Justice. It was, it was truly impressive. We'd also like to thank uh, Assistant Monmouth County Prosecutor Bill Vazone for acting as our attorney coach. And Bill is a graduate of the program, so he's a Monmouth County Prosecutor now, and he came back to actually work with our students. And also Mrs. Holly Lucarelli, who couldn't be here with us tonight, for acting as the faculty advisor. So I'd like to introduce our students, Alexandria Henderson, <laughs> Kirk Loomer, and Sandra Dalton. Chloe McAloon, Dennis Abadi, Dylan Cullen, Gadir Lama, Nicholas Fisher, and Ty Blitzstein. Brian Kronstein is also a member of the team, but he couldn't make it tonight. So I want to say congratulations to our outstanding mock trial team. Congratulations. Okay, I would like to bring up Mr. Zwartz, our supervisor of extracurricular activities at this time. Okay, thank you, Dr. Donahue. Thank you, Mr. Sampson. Thank you, Board of Ed. Um, I'm new to this district. I started on March 20th, so this is my first medal ceremony, and I'd just like to tell everybody this is really impressive, and you know, it's really uh, awesome to be a part of this. At Colts Neck, we have one of, if not uh, one of the most, if not the most successful winter seasons we've ever had in 20 years. Uh, we had three sectional titles, an overall group title, and some excellent individual performances. I'm gonna first start by recognizing um, four wrestlers who had tremendous seasons. I know at least one of them is here, um, hopefully all four here. Um, I'll call them down and then I'll say just a little bit about each one. Uh, Logan Waller. Luke Rada, Michael Janucci, and Nick Moldaver. The Colts Neck wrestling team had a tremendous season. They were the 2019 B North Division champs, and they made it all the way to the Central Jersey Group 4 title match where they lost to Jackson Memorial. Um, these gentlemen up here first, um, Logan Waller at 120 pounds. Uh, he was the District 22 champion. He was a Blue Devil Classic champion. He placed third at Regions, qualified for Atlantic City, and finished 32 and eight on the season. Congratulations. Uh, Luke Rada, who is not here, was a District 22 champion, a Blue Devil Classic champion, a Region 6 champion, qualified for Atlantic City and finished 38-3. Mike Janucci, who is not here, he was um, at 182 pounds, second in Regions, District 22 champ, Blue Devil Classic champ, qualified for Atlantic City and finished 25-6. And last but not least, Nick Moldaver. He was the District 22 champion, obviously qualified for Region 6 and finished 20 and 12. We'd also like to congratulate the uh, head coach, Brett Jankos, who couldn't be here tonight, who was District 22 Coach of the Year. So, good job, guys. Next, I'd like to call up the girls bowling team, who I know is here. Along with Coach Mike York. OK, 
Okay, the Colts and that girls bowling team won their second consecutive Central Jersey Group 2 championship and then followed that up with the overall Group 2 state championship. The overall Group 2 state championship is the first ever for bowling in Colts Neck history. The team finished as the number five team ranked in New Jersey. Head coach Mike York, assistant coach Margaret Carl. Then we have Victoria Hulse, Erica Dugan, Morgan Gitlitz, Gianna Bamonte, and Juliana Galano. And also congratulations to Morgan Gitlitz, who was first team all shore and first team all state. Good job, ladies. Okay, next I would like to call up all the members of the girls swim team who are in attendance. Okay, Colts Neck Girls Swim had a season to remember. The girls were division champs, short conference champions, and also state sectional champions. The girls won the school's first ever sectional title in Central Jersey Group B by defeating Middletown South 93-77, to a team who was also the defending champion at the short conference meet until Our Lady Cougars outscored them 287-250.5. to In the sectional final versus Mid-South, Megan Judge won the 50 and 100 free, Arabella Lee claimed the 100 butterfly and 100 backstroke, and Julia Nappi took the 200 individual medley. Colts Neck was awarded the third seed in the Public B Tournament and beat second seeded Chatham 98-72 to advance to the Public B Final, where top seeded Morristown just proved to be too much in the overall group final. Individually speaking, the 200-yard medley relay team of Shannon Judge, Megan Judge, Emma Shaughnessy, and Arabella Lee set a Neptune pool record as well as a short conference record en route to short conference and Monmouth County titles. Other short conference winners included Arabella Lee in the 100-yard butterfly, Megan Judge in the 100-yard freestyle, and the 200-yard freestyle relay team of Ashley Anzavino, Shannon Judge, Megan Judge, and Emma Shaughnessy. Megan Judge was also a Monmouth County champion in both the 50 and 100 free, and was also a part of the Monmouth County champion 200 free relay team, along with Shannon Judge, Emma Shaughnessy, and Ashley Anzavino. All of these short conference winners named here were also first team all shore by the Asbury Park Press. Last but not least, a big congratulations to Coach Dennis Brock, who was named NJ.com's New Jersey Girls Swimming Coach of the Year. <laughs> Alexis Allegro, Alyssa Austin, Arabella Lee, Ashley Anzavino, Carolina Otto, Ella Amster, Emma Shaughnessy, Fiona Fruchtman, Gloria Liu, Jessica Robinson, Julia Nappi, Caitlin Genzer, Caitlin Lee, Cassidy Wickey, Christina Nappi, Leah McHugh, Madison Wee, Mandy Polensky, Megan Judge, Morgan Hovan, Nicole Dado, Nicole Safokli, Polina Popkova, Quinn Hoagland, Rachel Howard, Sarah Shaughnessy, Shannon Judge, and Zoya Pander. Great season, girls. Last but not least, I'd like to call down the members of the girls indoor track team. Some of the girls had a beat north divisional meet today, so we might not have them all here. The Colts Neck girls track and field team won their first indoor state sectional title this past season. Although they won last spring, this meet took more of a total team effort with major contributions coming from all the event groups. Often at championship meets, the pressure gets to many athletes and they do not achieve their best. This was not the case with the Colts Neck girls. In all nine groups, athletes set new personal bests. Athletes of note were Lily Shapiro, who won the 800 by stunning the top ranked 800 meter runner with a fierce kick. Cameron McCloskey, who placed second in the pole vault with a school record jump of 10.06. Delia Russo, who placed third and fourth in the 1600 and 3200, 
respectively. Natalie Shapiro, who plays third in the 3200. Sasha Lerner, who plays fourth in the 55 dash. Oh, Ariana Sakudis, who placed fourth in the 800. Colleen Megerly, who battled through injury to take sixth in the 1600. And the 4x4 relay, who sealed the win by placing third. This relay was made up of Sasha Lerner, Maya Mancini, Lily Shapiro, and Ariana Sakudis. Also of note individually, congrats to Lily Shapiro, who was first team all shore and first team all state in the 800. And here are your girls. Colleen Megerly, Katie Anderson, Maya Mancini, Emily Schulte, Danielle Dipsy, Megan Roeder, Lily Shapiro, Kavita Shah, Delia Russo, Isabella Pecoraro, Cameron McCloskey, Bella Lind, Brielle Luongo, Sasha Lerner, Natalie Shapiro, Ariana Sakudis, Jasmine Betacargi, Alexa Panaccio, and Catherine Taylor. Congratulations, girls. Congratulations to all our medal winners tonight. Mr. Sand. Thank you, Mr. Zorz. And so we'll have our host, uh, Marlboro High School. Good evening. Congratulations to all tonight's district medal recipients and their families. For Marlboro High School, we will begin by presenting medals to the students with us tonight who achieved a perfect score on the math SAT. So I'd like to invite up Matthew Goodman, <laughs> Vidi Patel, Tiara Rothi, Rona Shah, and Rifik Sharma. My colleagues already spoke what a wonderful achievement this is and how rare it is. So, excellent job, perfect 800 on the math SAT. Congratulations. Marlboro High School is fortunate to have a large and committed Model United Nations delegation under the leadership of their advisor, Dr. Richard Malik. This past winter at the 48th annual YMCA Model United Nations Conference held at the Hershey Lodge and Convention Center from January 4th through January 6th, the Marlboro delegation won several awards and students were elected to several positions out of a conference of over 1,800 students. So I'll ask the students to come up at this time and then I'll speak to their specific achievements. Alexis Bonilla, Stephanie Fowder, Joshua Finkelstein, Sanskriti Gupta, and Annalise Wu. Please come up. So I'll start by saying that uh, there are many other members, obviously, of the delegation that are not here tonight because uh, they were not, they did not earn a distinction for an individual award, but the delegation as a whole from Marlboro High School received the Outstanding Premier Delegation Award at the conference, so congratulations to the delegation as a whole. And also, Dr. Malik, who is their advisor, he received the Premier Advisor Award at the conference as well, which goes to one advisor uh, amongst all the advisors that are present at the conference. So congratulations to him. So first, uh, when I say your name, please just take a step forward. Alexis Bonilla. Alexis was recognized as the Premier Diplomat of the Group of 20 and was elected Committee Chair of the Model UN Group of 20 or G20 Committee. Congratulations. <laughs> Stephanie Fowder. Stephanie was elected committee chair and Model UN officer of the Social, Humanitarian, and Cultural Committee. Congratulations. <laughs> Joshua Finkelstein. Joshua was recognized for his outstanding country research paper on politics and security. Congratulations, Joshua. <laughs> Sanskriti Gupta. Sanskriti was recognized as the premier first year diplomat of the environment and technology. Congratulations. Annalise Wu. Annalise was recognized as the premier first year diplomat of the Asia Pacific Summit. Congratulations. 
Congratulations to all our Model UN winners. Well done. We have some students from the Future Business Leaders of America, or FBLA, so I'll call their names and then speak a bit about them. Pavan Chan, Ronak Shah, and Haley Steinberg, please come up. On Thursday, March 21st, 2019, and Friday, March 22nd, members of the FBLA attended the State Leadership Conference at Harris Conference Center in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Marlboro High School had 12 students earn eligibility to compete at the national competition in San Antonio, which I believe is late June, early July. Uh, we had 12 students, I'm sorry, I just said that. Later this year, uh, we have three students who won first place in their respective competitions, and there's other three students with us tonight. So as I, again, I'm gonna call your name, just take a step forward, Pavan. Pavan Chan won first place in the spreadsheet application. Congratulations, Pavan. <laughs> Ronak Shah. Ronak is a second time stage winner, and he won first place in accounting one. Congratulations. And Haley Steinberg. Haley won first place in accounting two. Congratulations, Haley. And congratulations to all of our FBLA winners. At this point, I'll turn it over to Mr. Ryden, our supervisor of extracurricular activities. Thank you, Dr. Bleakley. Uh, first, I'm going to bring down Raul Rana. Raul is a member of our JSA, Junior Statesman of America, and he was unable to make the fall uh, presentation, so he won first place at the, the fall JSA convention. Congratulations. Next, I'd like to call down Katrina Enriquez. Katrina is a member of the Monmouth County Vocational FFA chapter, and she competed in the state uh, exp expose. She won first place best in show for silks, first place for her herb basket, and was recently elected the chapter historian. Congratulations, Katrina. Uh, would Matthew Goodman come on down? Matt is a member of our DECA chapter. Uh, this year we had 10 students that advanced from the state competition to the national competition. Matt was our first place winner in accounting at the state level. And on to athletics. First I'd like to recognize Mr. Brad Higginson. Brad Higginson is our girls basketball coach. Uh, our girls basketball team finished the season with a record of 23 and 8, where they were the A North Division champions. Mr. Higginson was recognized as the Shore Sports Network Girls Basketball Coach of the Year. And would Coach Charlie Frankel come on down? Coach Frankel is a Marlboro graduate. He is our head coach. This year, the team had the best wrestling season in Marlboro High School history with an overall record of 15 and 12. The team made the state tournament for the first time as a team ever in state history. Coach Frankel is recognized as a District 19 Coach of the Year. Rapley, come on down. Luke Rapley competes for our winter track team, and Luke was named the New Jersey Mile Split All-State Track and Field member for the long jump. And last but not least, Mr. Leo Carnival. Please 
Leo competes for our swim team. This year, Leo became the 50-yard freestyle and the 100-yard freestyle Monmouth County champion and Shore Conference champion, making him the fastest kid in the Shore Conference. Congratulations. And that concludes Marlboro High School. Have a wonderful evening. We'll take a two minute recess, folks. Okay, we're gonna resume the meeting. Um, the first thing I wanna do is, Chuck's gotta finish his report, but before we do that, I'd like Mark to, Mark Toscano, our board of attorney, to update the executive session. Yeah, j just, just for clarity, uh, in addition to the items listed, uh, the board also discussed under item number three, uh, student discipline matters. Uh, with respect to item number seven, we're discussed uh, docket number EDU-00244-219, and there was just a, uh, an issue on the agenda with respect to box number four. The board did not discuss uh, the negotiations with the Principals Association, but rather did discuss the negotiations with the SICA, uh, <coughs> which is uh, the supervisors of extracurricular activities. So that, that was all, Mr. President. Okay, uh, Chuck, do you want to? Yeah. So, your presentation? thank you, Mr. Estill. So, just a, a couple of a couple items to just update folks on. Uh, so, we continue to advocate regarding the funding issue uh, and the implementation of uh, Senate Bill Two in New Jersey. A couple of things that have happened uh, since the previous meeting that are on the slate to occur. Uh, so the Support Our Students group, of which we're a part of, of which there are now approximately 75 school districts, uh, have been, we've been meeting regularly with uh, other organizations across the state. There was a meeting held on April 11th uh, at the NJEA headquarters in Trenton that involved the New Jersey School Boards, New Jersey ASBO, NJASA, the Support Our Students group, uh, and a number of other state-level organizations the outcome of that meeting is that our groups have drafted uh, a joint statement uh, that we'll be making um, and delivering to Governor Murphy's office uh, regarding funding. Um, and we will be continuing to advocate across the board. On April 30th is the Senate budget hearing in Trenton. Uh, there are plans for uh, some significant activity from the districts there at that point in time. It's not a hearing where you can testify, uh, but there will be a very strong presence from members of the Support Our Students group there at the Senate Budget Hearing. Uh, and on May 8th, uh, I am meeting with the uh, representatives from the Department of Education and the Commissioner of Education, along with uh, Senators Thompson, uh, Assemblyman Dancer, Assemblyman Clifton, uh, to bring some of our uh, concerns to that office as well. Um, as it stands now, and the budget presentation will be April 29th, and Mr. Boyce at the, in our subsequent meeting will go through that in, in great detail. However, uh, you know, the budget is intact for this upcoming school year. The subsequent year, however, uh, it looks uh, to be very extreme uh, for us. Uh, to the tune of uh, upwards of $10 million, potentially. Uh, I, I, I have to hope that the uh, path that we're on regarding funding uh, is altered in some way because it could not have been the intent of the legislators uh, to draft such a uh, swift um, financial tsunami for as many districts as are facing it currently in the school systems across the state. For those of us who have been on the uh, wrong side of S2 and I uh, want to be clear that nobody uh, from this district uh, advocates for any other district to lose aid in order for us to gain aid. No, no child should be educated at the expense of another in the state of New Jersey. Uh, there is, you know, we do feel that there is, uh, there are some uh, funds in that budget, especially long term. Over the next five years, I believe $100 million has been marked, earmarked for horse racing across the state and things of that nature. And so when we're looking at uh, expenditures like that from the state government, uh, while districts like Freehold Regional High School District, Toms River, Brick, Jackson, Hillsboro um, are facing uh, tens and tens of millions of dollars in reduction, I can't uh, help but think that that's, uh, that doesn't represent 
uh, what we would want for our children across the state. So um, we are going to continue to advocate. Um, we are going to continue to meet with legislators to testify, to um, cajole, um, and, and to just be a presence. And then ultimately, uh, the community members of the Frio Regional High School District, uh, I would hope, would exercise their power at the ballot box uh, to demonstrate how they feel about potentially losing millions of dollars in, in state aid when we're one of the most financially efficient districts in the state of New Jersey. Uh, and it will be um, our role to make sure that those folks understand exactly what those implications are. So, thank you. Well, if I could just add a little bit more to that, um, Mr. Sampson. Um, at my age, my horse has already run. What this is all about is the children uh, in the district. We saw the accomplishments that they uh, made tonight. I've never seen so many 800s on SATs, and this is the future of, it, of our kids. I can't support all the efforts that you do enough and thank you for continuing on this. We're on the phone on a daily basis talking about the accomplishments of the district and I would hate for it to go in a negative direction. So thank you and thank you all the board members that are supporting the continued funding of, of our Freehold Regional District. Uh, with, with that, I'd like to move forward to uh, board reports and I know that we have a uh, curriculum and, and instruction, if somebody would take that. Yes, okay. We had met on April 2nd, and there were a few things we talked about. We uh, heard about a student's application for early graduation. Then we moved on to hear about the updates in the math program. I think everyone here knows that starting in uh, school year 2021, we're changing the math sequence. Freshmen are gonna start with geometry and then algebra one and algebra two will be sophomore and junior year, respectively. And our administration has met with the sending districts about this. Um, and there was a lot of evaluation that we did here with respect to grades six through eight. And we're really doing this to get the students to take credit bearing math classes in college and feel better prepared for uh, college tests such as the ACT and SAT. So the bottom line is, the consensus is Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 will be held back to back. Then we move the discussion on the Career Pathways Grant. Uh, we heard about updates and expansion plans. Uh, the web design pathway has been implemented at Freehold Borough. Uh, in September, a, a cohort will start in Freehold Township. And then with respect to the Health Professions Pathway, the Year 4 grant was approved to the tune of $100,000, and that money comes from the state of New Jersey. And in September 2020, the uh, web design program will start in Marlboro. And there's a Health Professions Pathway at Freehold Borough already. Um, Central State continues to be a great partner with us on the Health Professions Program and ultimately we're looking to bring the Health Professions Program to Manalapan High School in the future. Um, we talked about the IB program. It was good to know that all the students, approximately 27, who expressed interest in the program were able to be accommodated in Freehold Township. So now those students will be transferring from their home schools to Freehold Township. Uh, and then we wrapped up the meeting basically looking at the magnet program application process. Uh, we looked at all the data for the current eighth grade applicants and we really got to see each magnet program's results, how many students took the test, how many were successful, uh, we saw how many kids were accepted, how many were on the waiting list. Um, and we also got to see the underlying test data from each of the K through eight uh, districts in the region. And then finally, with respect to curriculum revisions, they're gonna be occurring this summer uh, in culinary, AP government, two math courses, and come August 2019 at our meeting, we'll be approving 
curriculum adoptions in biology, chemistry, physics, statistics, and one or two others that I failed to take good enough notes on and are missing. But that might be it. So that's it, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Messenger. I was supposed to be there, but I got stuck in uh, traffic and I couldn't make it at the end. And thank you for covering all of that. Uh, we did not have a finance meeting since the last board meeting. However, uh, our next board meeting will center on finance. And I encourage all of the TV listeners to come out and listen to that uh, finance meeting, which I believe is going to be the most critical meeting that we've had in years and years and years here. So please uh, come out and listen to what Mr. Boyce has to say. I, I've reviewed his uh, preliminary <coughs> budget report and it, it's quite outstanding. And uh, I'd like to see his insights on it. <coughs> insights. Uh, we have one more, which is the policy committee. Um, who would like to take that? I got it. Oh, okay. So the policy committee met on April 2nd and discussed the four policies and three regulations on tonight's agenda for first read. None of these changes result in any financial impact to the district. Regulation 2460.8, special education, free and appropriate public education is an existing mandated regulation requiring board action to amend. We typically don't have to um, vote on regulations, but this is one of those that we do. The changes recommended reflect terminology changes, basically substituting the word student or students for pupil or pupils and student safety data system for electronic violence and vandalism reporting system to be consistent with other policy statutes and regulations. Policy 5111, eligibility of non-resident, excuse me, resident, non-resident students and its companion regulation is an existing mandated policy as well. The changes recommended are based on New Jersey Department of Education guidance regarding immigrant students. State law prohibits school districts from refusing to admit students based on their immigration status, except in the case of F-1 visa holders who are in the United States for the purpose of pursuing their education. Federal law allows districts to prohibit F-1 visa holders entirely or to permit them to enroll upon payment of full tuition to the enrolling district. We have opted to allow enrollment upon payment of full tuition and the regulations as well have been reflected to recommend this change. Policy 7430, school safety and its companion regulation is an existing mandated policy that reflects the district's commitment to safeguarding students and staff and updates our reporting requirement for incidents that occur during career or technical education or structured learning experiences. Policy 7440, school district security, is an existing mandated policy. It's being amended to reflect a recent legislative change allowing the superintendent to designate a school employee with expertise in school safety and security other than a school administrator to serve as the school safety specialist. That person will be responsible for the supervision and oversight of school safety and security personnel and safety procedures and policies, as well as being a li liaison with local law enforcement. Policy 8561, Procurement Procedures for School Nutrition Programs, is an existing mandated policy being amended to comply with changes to the federal U.S. Department of Agriculture School Nutrition Programs regulations that occurred in August of 2018. <coughs> policy meets again in May. Date to be determined. Is that it, Amy? That's it. Very good, and thank you for, for covering that uh, so concisely and completely. Um, prior to our public comment, I know Mr. Boyce had just requested that he uh, jump in with some comments. So, Mr. Boyce? Yes, just one uh, update uh, for the agenda. Item uh, H4. A resolution to be provided at the meeting, which I have in front of me, is for a professional service award insurance broker. This is our property and casualty coverage, which we uh, did at an extensive RFP for. We had seven respondents, five of which we brought in to speak to, and two of us rated and ranked uh, those brokers. Finalized that work today, so we have the following resolution for your consideration tonight. Uh, be resolved that in accordance with New Jersey Public School Contracts Law, 
and JSA 18A, 18A, 510, and JSA 18A, 37. The Frail Regional High School District Board of Education engage USI Insurance Services National Incorporated as property casualty insurance broker for the period of July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2020 in the amount of $50,000 as per the agreement on file uh, in the office of the board secretary. This extraordinary unspecifiable service contract is being awarded based on the proposal being most advantageous to the district, price and other factors considered, including the firm's experience providing property and casualty insurance services to New Jersey school districts, and the qualifications of the specific personnel assigned to provide services to the Friol Regional School District. So that is H4, uh, the resolution being presented tonight. Thank you, Mr. Boyce. Um, I, I would like to uh, start public comment now. We have one resident on the list, and his name is Raj Giadilla. If you could, Mr. Giadilla, please uh, approach the podium and state your name and the township that you represent, that you come from. Hi, my name is Raj Giadilla. I'm from Marlboro, New Jersey, Marlboro, Marlboro. So basically, I've been coming to the meeting from last summer. I'm trying to learn more about Board of Education, how it handles, how it works. So I have a question now. Say the examinations are conducted by the administration, whether it is a, a entrance examination for the um, uh, magnet programs or SAT or uh, AP exams whatever it is so but we don't know how this conducted and whatever it is right so is there a, a oversight body that oversees this process whether this process is conducted right or wrong so is there a oversight body or is it independent body that oversees that has a auditing capacity to see whether this process is going right or wrong yeah. but also is any of the board members are part of that independent body? How does the whole process work? So I just want to. So I want to know. We've we've gone back and forth for months, Mr. Gardu, and, and you've insinuated that you you know something untoward that happened, but you you won't share that with us. So it puts us in a very difficult position. Sure. I, I will say, mm -hmm. we have test coordinators at each building mm -hmm. that oversee the test security with whatever those protocols are for whatever that assessment might be. Okay. The board is not involved in test security okay. at all okay. in, in the district. Okay. If So the, those test coordinators are part of the administration, right? They're part of the faculty and the administration. So it's still, still part of the administration. It's not an independent body. No. It, it is not outside of the uh, administration. Uh, depending on the test, it, it, it could be somebody from the SAT, but you, you, it may be somebody who it works within the system who is working for proctoring for the college board on that given day. It depends on the assessment. What if the administration intentionally uh, uh, compromises the test? We have seen so many cases like SAT in publicly right now, right? I mean, tests have been compromised. So in that case, how does it work? <laughs> Mr. Gardelia, we have test coordinators that oversee the security of our test. Let me finish. We have test coordinators that oversee the testing procedures, and we have very tight procedures that have, must be reported out, followed, and monitored. And those folks are responsible for that. If it's an in-district in test, we're responsible for our security. If it's an external test, there are other protocols that we must abide by. And then when you're, when you're talking about uh, cheating scandals that are occurring in, in other places. I, I can't speak to that. I can only speak to what are the procedures that we follow. If, if the administration is not conducting the test to the highest standards, there has to be an independent body. And the board has to be responsible at some point to make uh, administration accountable for their mistakes, right? There, there got to be something somewhere. You Mr. Can, Gardilla, can, I, can, I, can, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to go back and forth with you because yeah. I think you're being very disingenuous right now at the podium no, no, yeah, be, because there's there's other history here and it's yeah. a conversation not for a board meeting. It's a conversation outside of the board meeting and it's not a public give and take. So, it's an individual concern that you have. 
I don't have any, I'm, I'm just asking a general question. If something is wrong, if I bring an issue, so what is the issue? I, if I think this is compromise. I, if I could, Mr. President, sure, sure. I, I just, I think what Mr. Sampson's uh -huh. responding, and I think the point that maybe is being missed, sure, sure. is that it depends on the text. Okay. okay there, are, you, you there, there are, there are oversight bodies on okay. certain tests. It's a district test, uh -huh. then the security and the protocols are internal within the district. Okay, and without see. knowing what test you're referring to, okay. it's, it's hard for anybody up here okay. to, to get but, but this is also not the appropriate form. It's, it's not a question and answer on, on specific testing protocols related to that. That's that's for the administration to handle offline, Mr. Gardell, which we have done with you to the to with dozens of emails and conversations. Mr. Samson, I'm not getting the answers. You know that. Uh, you answered for August test, but you never answered. Right. You're uh, asking specific content questions of the test, that we're not inclined to share that with you, Mr. Gardell. I'm, I'm not asking for the test. I'm asking. Say if the if an AP examination is compromised, right? Then what are you going to do? That sounds bad. There, there, there's, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to comment other than there, there's been nothing compromised in, in our school system, Mr. Gardner. Okay. You, you will. Okay, Any old business? Oh, I just missed it here. Uh, may I have a motion? to approve items G1 through K4. Motion. Any, uh, second. any second? Motion. Second, second. Mr. Second. Bruno. Uh, discussion? Roll call, Sean. Mr. Bruno. Um, yes, except for I'm staying from G11 and K1, Mr. Sampson and Dr. Hazel, professional development. Ms. Capiello? Yes, on everything except H11 um, and K1 uh, to Dr. Hazel and Mrs. That's G. That's G11. G11. Oh, G11 and K1. K1, um, Mr. Sampson and Dr. Hazel, and then those light up states. Mr. Carolla? Yes. Mrs. Bankhauser? Yes. Mrs. Lavin? Yes. Mr. Messinger? Yes. Mr. Moses? Mr. Asatola? Yes. Any old business? Any of the uh, members wish to discuss old business? No? Then we'll move to new business. Any uh, members <coughs> wishing to discuss new business? No, may I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. And who seconded? Mr. Bruno. Okay, excellent. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.